And for me, I did the mediation clinic, which is a little different, which is dealing with family law matters, which is what Rubaiyat mentioned earlier. And so we help people with child custody issues, divorce issues, um, just basically that's just really it. And these are people who can't afford to have a divorce attorney or family law attorney. We may deal with some juvenile matters, but normally that's with the juvenile court, which is probably what you worked with earlier when you did children's rights, dealing a lot with juvenile court. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. So mainly people who cannot afford an attorney to have a divorce or to split their assets with their partner or child custody issues, parenting time, child support, that sort of thing is what we do in mediation. And Rubaya is 100% correct like with these clinics you cannot learn this from a book like you have to be dropped in you have to like just be like a parachute drop from the plane right into the table with your parties or your clients in front of you asking questions figuring it out and it's good that we can make mistakes yeah. because we have wonderful professors like Kimple and donovan that are able to help us out so yeah exactly yes so one final question for you rubaiyat and if it's a personal question you do not have to answer and that's fine it won't be in this video but how do you handle the emotional impact of dealing, being with criminal law? When I took criminal law, my one year, it was a very emotionally draining class, just learning about how people are harmed and how inhumane humans can be to each other. So I just want to talk to you about how you decompress, like what do you do? How do you separate yourself from like what it is that you're working with or that you know you'll be, or who you'll know you'll be working with? Yeah, so... First of all, I think like criminal defense work isn't for everyone and that's completely okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that have been through a lot of stuff um, who might not have the emotional capacity to um, be able to defend like a murderer or something. Um, so, but I feel um, like I can and I, I have the emotional capacity um, and specifically I, I approach criminal defense work with two things. One, um, from like a constitutional and legal perspective, I very firmly believe that no matter what the crime, um, whether they did the crime or didn't do the crime, like criminal law is very gray. Um, it's not like I try to stray away from like the innocent versus guilty narrative. Um, and that every person has a constitutional right to an adequate defense. And so, you know, whether it doesn't matter to me whether that person did it or not, because they have the right to have a legal defense, um, especially with public defense, um, with people that are that can't afford an attorney that are indigent. Um, I feel even strongly about that constitutional right. Um, and then also morally, I think that um, because the way that the criminal legal system is designed, it's very like defendant versus um, victim. And we don't see how um, often the victim can also be the defendant. And so there's, there's a lot of stories there. And even, even in the legal sense, like, you know, in criminal law, we saw how gray things were, right? It's about like, the intent and the action and the specifics of the action and all of that stuff but we treat it as like innocent guilty right um so morally i think that as a public defender like i think um i think everyone has the right to have their full story shown um in court and have their full story at least like heard um from from somebody and I guess the third thing, sorry. <laughs> um, the third thing is also like a lot of the times, you know, because there's a lot of crimes that are crimes that are just like basic misdemeanors, right? Like that shouldn't even be prosecuted. Um, and so a lot of the time it's actually the emotional impact is not like, how am I defending this person? It's very much like, why is this person here? <laughs> and, and very much like, wow, this court system is so inefficient. And like, I'm just one person and I can't make somebody, I can't make the system more efficient and better and whatever. So, but dealing with those things. So one of them is, you know, these, these kind of like philosophical principles that I have. And then the other thing is decompressing also you know, it's it, it, it can get pretty hard. Like if I lose a case or if I feel like I've let my client down and, 
you know, when you have like a relationship with that client and you feel responsible for that client, um, or like the, my client in prison, um, you know, having like a really emotional connection with that person and knowing that she's in prison. Um, it's, it, you have to like turn it off somehow, sometimes. Um, and there has been days when like I lost a trial one time and it was, it wasn't that big of a deal, but I got so down on myself. Like I took like a day and I like couldn't talk to anyone. I was so depressed and I was like, I never want to do law again. Like I want to quit. This is terrible. Um, but you know, you give yourself a day and then you get back up. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. So here's the thing. Like I said, Rubia and I, we were in the same section. We were one L's together. We are now three L's together. Yes. And the thing is, Rubia has always had a passion for public interest. Like, I cannot stress that enough. And so we finally connected. And also, before you go, Rubia, you have to tell us where people can find you yeah. on your YouTube channel. But <laughs> oh so any law students, if you have any questions, Check out Rubaiette's old videos. Like she talks about like the LSAT, oh God, how her so mother amazing. gave her some great advice. <laughs> and it's just like, she's amazing and she's incredible. And even though I changed my mind from doing public interest, like I would like to, I'm going to do pro bono and provide resources for yeah. those who need public interest services. I just physically don't have the mental and the emotional capacity to deal with it. But I am so grateful that I ran into people like Rubaiette who do and it takes all of us to make the world go round and like the world is better because she will be helping juveniles and other people like that as a public defender yeah. when we graduate. And you're going to help people too. I mean, I think, oh, I think like one thing that we need to understand too about public interest is like, it's not just like, you know, being out on the like field and like fighting with a sword. It's also doing people's taxes, you know, it's also like, it, helping people with divorces and things like that. There's a lot of preventative things that people need. So, you know, you're also making the world a better place. <laughs> Not as better as you. Oh but oh how God. can we find you? Well, yeah. let's restate it again. Rubaiette, how can we find you? Um, okay, so you can follow me on Twitter. Um, that's like my big place right now. Um, I'm trying to get in on Public Defender Twitter. So that's at R-U-B-A-Y-E-T underscore l-a-s-k-e-r i think um, and then uh yeah i have a youtube channel it's really bad it's not as good as Garnell's. it's uh you know mine is very cringy i haven't posted in forever but it's called a frenzied mess um and yeah okay hey. yeah Feel free to DM me or anything. So put in the comments below any questions that you have for Rubaya. I'll make sure that she'll check them or I'll send them to her. And I will also leave all of her social media handles in the description box so that you'll be able to see it. And just reach out to her, whether you're a 1L, 2L, or 3L, or you're thinking about going to law school, Rubaya will point you in the right direction. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Canil's Laugh. I appreciate it so much. It was just it's great to have you here. Thank I'm so you so much. Thank you so much for You're having welcome. me. I'm, I'm so honored. And yeah. I'm honored. I love you. Our first collab. <laughs> I love you too. And then we're going to look back. I know in like five years, really? you're going to be this huge tax attorney and I'm going to be like, wow, like, look, I, no, I was like, there. Like, no, all these she... people will be coming to you oh as a public God. defender and you'll have like all these other attorneys working under you at, with your own public defender's office. Okay. I okay. guess that'll work. I don't know. Can that work? <laughs> but we'll see. We'll make it happen. All right. Oh, wait. Are we going to introduce? Oh, okay. This is my paralegal. <laughs> this is our paralegal. <laughs> no, your paralegal, like P-U-R-R. -R. Oh, okay. sorry. Hi! All right, hold on. I'll wait to get her. So, uh, this is my par Oh, you can follow her on Instagram too. You can follow her on Instagram, Laughers. This is Me Too. Me Too. She's my paralegal. She's uh, very po political, so you can follow her at Politics by Me Too. It'll be linked below. <laughs> and Me Too is so cute and she's so friendly. Like, is I was she? holding her. <laughs> she really doesn't want to be. See, look, she wants me. You want to go to the car? Can I hold her? Oh, look! Oh, she's like a she's baby. Oh, she's like, help. <laughs> she's like, mommy, come and get me. Okay, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. You'll be fine. I like to abduct ab abduct animals. Oh, my God. Don't go. So okay, okay, she jumped out. That's what cats do. Oh, All right. There you go. Bye. Till next time. <laughs>
or just like put in the comments below any questions yes. that you have for everybody at Sorry, hold on, my gun was in the way. So, <laughs> Rubea, thank you so much for being on Carnell's lap. Thanks. Oh my gosh, okay. double it over the name. Rubea.